Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, your worst nightmare. Changing head guard. You know you hate it because your tennis shop hates it. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so before I get started on your worst nightmare, let's talk about your beautiful dream, right? You ever dream about that perfect bag? That perfect backpack? Well, I did a video on this before, and I still believe that this is one of the best bags on the market, if not the best. It's a Go Sport Axiom backpack. Now, we got the pads right here that'll keep you nice and soft so nothing hard like a racket hits you in the back, right? We got this well thought out hook that you can hook onto the court so the baby's bottom doesn't hit the floor, okay? So I'm gonna hook it on just like how I would on the tennis court. Got my two racket compartment here on the side. Hey, how about a racquetball saver for you? Or a water bottle, let's say, holder there. I'm just trying to make it look cool for you. And what about the second most important thing, besides a racket, a shoe compartment. All right. Well thought out. Best backpack on the market. It's kind of like the North Face bag for tennis. Don't forget your keys, your wallet, cell phone. What about a pack for that? And an internal zipper to keep it all in order. And what about that jewelry? Nah, just kidding. This is velour right here. It's nice and soft. For maybe that diamond necklace? Nah, but it's that high class, guys. So if you want one of these bags, they're back in stock. It's gosport.com, spelled G-E-A-U sport.com. All right, my buddy Dixon Chan over in Australia um, sent me an email and said, hey, how about a topic about head guard changing? When should I change it? Should I change it? How do I change it? Well, I did a video on an AeroPro on how to change it. And you know, it's a big pain in the behind, but, uh, and I'm sure it's a big pain in the behind for whoever has to do it for you too, because I've had to do them for a long, long time. But uh, let's address when you should change a head guard. Um, I have an example here of a head guard that really needs to be changed. As you can see, it's falling apart, right? That's still protecting the head, barely, right? That's chipped off. That's chipped off. When you start seeing the actual racket uh, through the grommet, that's definitely time to change. The number one thing that we actually all need to know is, are you a scraper? Do you scrub a lot you know do you dig do you dig right do you constantly impact the head guard the racket on the ground if you do then keep a mental note that you're probably going to be changing a lot of head guards um the one thing that i noticed though for those of us who are like kids or vertically challenged you tend to scrape more because you're lower to the ground. So just make a mental note. I mean, that is okay because that's on the side. It's, it's not gonna protect that. You're just digging for those volleys there. But um, if you do wear these out pretty you know, rapidly, let's say every three, six months, three to six months, I would probably order a few of these to keep in hand because the racket companies, this, the, the head guards for the racket companies is last on the priority list. 
they do not really care um, to make these because there's no money to be made. And that's the damned honest truth. So if you value your racket and you don't plan to change your racket um, anytime soon, I would probably order two, three, four, six of these head guards and keep them around as long as you're keeping your racket around because eventually they're going to stop making those head guards because after a generation or two, um, they just like, it's done. We don't care about that racket anymore. We want the people to move forward into the new generation. Um, I mean, just like this TF T fight 305. This is an older generation. I'm able to still get the head guard, thankfully, but I would say in a year or two, uh, this head guard will be extinct. So now putting the damn thing on, okay? As any of you out there know who've done head guards before, it's not as easy as it used to be. Well, maybe it never was easy, but I feel like Babylon has made it more difficult. Uh, some of the Wilsons are pretty difficult. Uh, head and Yonex, not too easy either. Um, so you need tools to help you. Um, hair dryer. I know people who've told me that they've, you know, put this thing over the an open flame on a stove to warm it up so that it's, you know, easier to bend around the head. Um, all those tricks do work. Um, granted, you kind of know what you're doing. So... Um, because these are so stiff and when it's cold, it's actually even stiffer. And when you put this on here and you start moving it into the other sides, this side wants to pop out. So a nice clip would help too. Tools you need that are most important. A clip helps. So once you get the top part of one side in, you clip it down, okay? And then you start going so this side doesn't pop up. Now, the trick to doing head guards is if, let's say it's a Babolat, and there's one or two grommet holes that hold this down. You don't want those in. Those go in last. So you want to just get those in first without dropping this down because it'll just make it harder for you later on. So you clip it down and you start moving your way over to the other side with, you need a good one of these. This thing, it costs 10 bucks now. It used to cost five or six, but you should have a few of these lying around um, just you know, to make the grommet holes a little bigger for stringing and to put head guards in, because this you definitely need and you need a good one. I actually just like this cheapy one that's, you know, has this wooden wooden grip. Like I said, it's like 10 bucks. You can get it on Amazon. Um, and it's called an AWL. A -W -L. Don't know where that name came from. I asked my buddy, who is my boss, uh, once. I was like, it's an owl? He's like, no, it's an all. It's an all what? I was like, A-W-L, man. I was like, all? Right? Where the hell, who the hell came up with that name? He's like, when I poked you, you said all. Oh. Okay, cool. Whatever. Okay. Anyways, so you need this to pop it in. I mean, you, you can see it in one of my other videos how I did it. Um, the other way, the other thing you pot potentially will need um, is a heat gun or a hair dryer. Anything to warm up the top while you're doing it so that it kind of softens up and stretches. You don't want to overheat it though. You just want to warm it up so that it can get to a stretchy stage. So don't melt the damn thing because you will jack it up. Okay. Uh, set it on low and just go like this to warm it up. Okay. For maybe 10 seconds and then work on it with the awl. 
And then if that's not good enough, then work on it for another 10 seconds and then go back to the all to stretch it through. So change head guards more often if you're a scraper, okay? Now, if you want to do this yourself and you're a stringer, um, there's a learning curve to this. You're probably going to jack a bunch of these up before you figure it out. I've jacked hundreds of them in my life. So um, you just got to learn through failure like everything else. So, and, but you got to be confident at what you're doing and, you know, like watch that video it, that I did with the Aero Pro. That should help you a lot. Okay. So order a bunch of these. Just know you're going to screw it up. Um, make sure you have the tools that, that, you know, can make you successful at changing these head guards. If not, bring it to, uh, your local pro shop. And uh, hopefully they know what they're doing, okay? Um, but yeah, change them often if you scrub. Uh, don't wait until you see graphite and it's kind of wearing off, uh, right? Don't wait until it's past this point because the racket will start softening up and uh, eventually crack. Um, that's way down the road though. But, you know, just... Know what you're doing, change it out often. If you don't know, ask somebody for help. All right, thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis.